Hello world, I'm a cop. Welcome back to Sunless Sea, where we are at this moment in London. And last time we got the Clattery Air into our team, and we also got the uh, Bridged Morg. Mog? Mog? Anything? Uh, and uh, we forgot to check his thing, so he's got plus two iron. I think the three mirrors and two pages are still better, so... Our goals at this moment are, well, we're learning about the Clatery Air. Uh, what can we actually, can we do something else with her? We can increase our hearts or we can propose. We can get her father if we have one strange catch, okay? So maybe we'll try and find a, about that. And then we had, a, we had a goal to go somewhere. Objective here. Uh, Admiral's Commission, retrieve strategic information from the Cumian Canal. South along the coast from London. Okay, so we are gonna go uh, to there, and the other place we wanna go is the Mangrove College and Irem, and that's about it. So let's just uh, launch and start moving towards uh, the Cumian Canal, which, you know, like I said, is south from here. Oh, our boat is so slow. Do we have, do we have money, by the way? Uh, because it's here. Where's our, oh, there's our money, 25, no. It would be nice to have enough money to actually buy ourselves a better engine. That would really help us because we could go faster. Also, wait, why am I having the lights on? There's no reason to have the lights on. Maybe we should have bought a little bit more supplies. I didn't realize we only had 8 supplies to our 16 fuel. It would, it would be nice to have, you know, about the same-ish amount of them, but maybe we don't need it. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! I just remembered a thing. Right, because we have given our port report back to London, we can get another port report from here again. So, oh, there's also that critter there again, which is nice. Maybe we can make a strange catch out of it. Shoot it once. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, and shoot it again. And it's dead. Go grab. I don't think we can get a strange catch from one of these. Uh, we can dissect it, or we can butcher it for supplies. You know what, let's butcher it for supplies. Oh, you lost 20 hunger. Oh, I thought we'd get one supply. Well, losing 20 hunger is pretty good as well. Like, I think that's about... Or, where was our hunger at? I did not realize. Okay, that's four. Then 20 really wasn't that much. Okay, we'll go back to Quaker's Haven. And we will chat to the fisherman to get port report. And is there anything else we'd like to do? How much is the drinks? 20. It will get rid of terror, I think. We only have 13 terror. That's not much. Actually, that's quite a lot. Hmm. And we can visit the hilltop again. What did we get from this last time? I don't remember. Well, let's go check out the hilltop of our town again. There's not much wind on the undersea, but Mutton Island suffers eerie gusts and buffets from an unexpectedly local fragment of weather, and the air on the hilltop sometimes carries interesting scents. You stand on a cliff top, looking over the little village. Smoke from the chimney of the cock and magpie drifts straight upwards. As you watch, the smoke tilts. The sudden wind thins it to a pencil as much, then nothing. The wind screams unexpectedly, like a god cut in half. What a noise! It must be a cave around the island, channeling the air. At least that's the most comforting explanation. Below you, the locals each take nips from a shared flask and make toast towards the mainland. The wind is southerly. Okay, this was the exact same thing we had la happened last time. So we gained more terror and we gained some fragments. I think that's probably something good. Okay, let's take a drink at the Cock and Magpie. There's only one public house on the island. The Cock and Magpie is famed for its local cider and, of course, the seafood. Cider and cave dowry. The trees of the Neath are scraggly and rich, scraping a living with a parasynthesis, but the apples of Mutton Island are tart and powerful, perfect for Zyda. Zyda? Cider! This stuff is stronger than it looks. You stretch out in your seat, sh stare through the leaded window at your safely moored ship, and find yourself whistling. The landlord gives you a friendly grin and goes back to winning his cleaver. Okay, so we lost a lot of money for that, but we also got rid of a lot of Terra, so maybe that was okay, but I, don't th I think that was pretty much all of our money. <laughs> So maybe not the best thing we could have done there, but, you know, we still did it. It's good to get a drink every once in a while. Did our, wait, did our, how, did our chair even go down? 
Well, if it went down, it wouldn't go down by much. Uh, wait, what's... Oh, I was like, what is this here in the darkness? That's our boat. We haven't gotten close enough to... Yeah, because the map works in these kind of fragments, and if you're not at the correct spot of the fragment, it will just uh, give you... Like, it will show you in the darkness. Let's follow the shoreline. That's better for our terror situation. And we don't really need to use the light at this point. Well, most definitely since we are in the light of this buoy here, we don't need to use the light. And when we are close to the shore, we also don't need to use the light. Because when you can see the shore, the, the Z isn't that terrifying. Uh, okay, there's another one of those critters there. Wait, did we... Yeah, we did send our bat. The Kumian Canal is, well, right here. Let's go fight that creature. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Shoot it! No, 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 no. Shoot it! Oh, crap, we missed, we missed, we missed. Now shoot it. Thank you, and, well, we're... Almost the point where we would use one supply, so let's just butcher it for supplies. We lose 40 hunger. That's nice. And here is the command canal. If I remember the command canal correctly, this is the place where we could go back to the surface of the planet. <laughs> but I don't think we really want to do that. And I think it required a lot of stuff to be able to do that. Well, we're gonna go to the command canal and we're gonna see what it requires. Okay, we got ourselves another secret. That's good. And oh, there is the... Oh, we're getting pretty terrified again. Let's not be so terrified. And we'll go to the harbor here. Command Canal staging area. Here the dark waters run down from the surface, from a brighter sea. The canal ascends through locks and gates and shadow turns to the sunlight of the surface. So we control the surface. We require two supplies, 22 fuel, and menace is yearning, burning, no more than 199. Okay, we can listen to surface gossip. The ships of the surface linger here. It is their lifeline to a warmer place. A sorry end. A card game ends badly when one surface sailor knives another for all the usual reasons. The other players scrabble for the coins and spill from her pockets, but you snatch up a scrap of paper they overlook. Curious markings, dates, times, code names. Spice work. So we got one move in the great game. Moves in the great game. The nations of Europe and beyond compete for influence. Their plots reach even to the need. The admiral and the diplomat, among others, will be interested to hear this. Uh, okay, and then we can fulfill our admiralty commission. Row out and meet a contact at the foot of the Albertine Gates. The password is the Empire Remembers. A deeply tanned vagabond waits in a jolly boat. His clothes are ragged and his face is filthy, but his voice and manners are educated. His magic is a string of numbers and the names of seven towns in Essex, Shropshire and Cumbria. He insists that you repeat it back to him three times. He will allow you to commit to paper. So we get another strategic information and then we can gather a port report. Many ships pass this way, but perhaps you'll pick up something they missed. Business as usual. The gates open and shut. The lock remains free from sabotage. If anywhere besides London is safe in all the intensity, it's here. The surface nation have an interest in keeping the way open. Right, and when, because we got that strategic information, I think we can, with this strategic information, we can use it. And we can make sense of a memory of a distant saw, or we can make sense of the moves in the game. Which one do we want to do? Actually, let's take a look at our objective. Uh, how do... Can we... Become London's most venerated explorer. What... What, <laughs> what did we need for that? Uh, I don't know. Well, it probably doesn't matter. Let's just... Uh, hmm. Let's use... The memory of a distant shore. Go! That's... Of course! That's why. That's where. And now you know who. Now, I have one vital intelligence. We lost one memory of distant shore and the two strategic informations. Uh, can we do something with that vital information? Vital intelligence. Vitality and intelligence. What would we do without them? Especially for spies, diplomats or pirates. Can be sold on the London markets. 
Okay. Well, that's what we came here to do. But since we still have a lot of fuel and a lot of supplies, which we... Well, we don't have any money. I was like, well, we could probably buy more supplies from here. But no, we probably can't because we don't have any money. Uh, what do we have? We have 13 supplies. I know there's a location down south. So let's go to that location. And uh, we'll get a port report from there as well. And with that port report, we will then come back to London. We'll probably take like... Uh, well, cause it's how far away is the place? I don't remember. There's location about maybe here-ish, and maybe we'll, we'll do is we'll go a little bit this way and then go up, go check out if there's anything over here, and then head back to London. After which, I think our next trip is gonna be this way because we, that one guy we have the surgeon in our hold wanted to go to the Chelanet, and we'll probably take him there. Also, then we have someone else. We had someone who wanted to go somewhere, didn't we? Miscellaneous. Unto the Z. Terror. Knowledge about submarine. Closing chapter. Bound for Gator's Morn. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, Gator's Morn is also something we want to go. And I think Gator's Morn is about. It's usually about like here ish. So that's also one of the places we might want to go to. Turn on the light because our terror was increasing again. Let's let it go down. It's green, so it should be going down. Yeah, it's going down. Uh, let's send out the bat. See if it finds something for us. The Iron Republic, yes. Uh, that's where we were trying to head to. It's down there. And we're already starting to see it. Probably don't need to keep our lights on, especially since there's a boat that might attack us. We don't want to attack it, I just want to see what it is. Unfinished... Revolu... <laughs> okay, don't know what they are. So, this place here... Is basically hell. So, let's have a look... What they got here. Duck. Hell's client's dead. Be wary. Their laws are not the laws of man or nature. Factory engines roar like false lions. Blood thunders in the dock pipes. Crimson lighting skitters across the deck. Leaps to the rail. Curls there like a cat. The city is reflected in glassy calm harbor water. The citizens there have the heads of dogs and serpents. Hell has brought freedom to the Iron Republic. Freedom from all laws, even those of nature. Listen, why can't we listen? Oh, we need Terra 70. Ooh, engage an officer, the irrepressible cannoneer. Captain, are you looking for a gunner? I'm looking for a ship. Here are my references. Here are my references. Here's my design for a whistling shell. Here's my colleague. He'll stay on shore. Here's my hand. Will you take it? The cannoneer is a gunnery officer who substantially increases iron. Uh, what do we need? We need... Oh, 20 echoes. Hmm. Hello, you're a sailor. It's time ashore. We cannot do that. Market of hunger. The parliament of flies. The market of hunger with spies and residuals. It's apparently the bazaar. Today, flies with market. Bzz, bzz. Okay, first of all, let's compile a port report. It won't be entirely straightforward. The streets won't lie straight, and the ink freezes whenever you look away from the inkwell. Fact and fiction. The record the Republic's events. It's like trying to sing wax or believe water. You do what you can. The third paragraph butts eyes. The date is fundamentally wrong. The fool stops by. You do what you can. We lost two pages. Oh no. The Parliament of Flies opened her business. You now have one tale of terror. We now have one memory of distant shores. Nice. Uh, let's go look at the... Wait, what is this? Find a tittering artifice's project. This is a forward-mounted weapon with unusual characteristics. Seven stitch in ivory. Twelve devil bone dies. One secret. Well, we can't do that, so let's go to the Market of Hungers. The Market of Hungers with the spires and sigils. It is a parody of the bazaar. Today... Oh, right, we read already that. Visit the Shops tab. You gained one Terra, you gained one Fragment. Okay, Shops tab, House of Pleasures... You could sell fuel for free. Okay, that's not a very good. Damn it! How are we gonna get money? Well, we're gonna have to get some money from. Okay, so but we know. Okay, there's a engineer here or a gunnery dude here that we can get. So what we probably should do is uh, let's start heading like 
this way. Okay, let's not go into the fog. So we're gonna go west. No, east. This is east. Yeah, let's head east. Uh, occasionally turn on the lights just to keep the terror at bay a bit. Oh, we're already going for totally red, so now we need to keep the lights on at all times. And let's start... Okay, if we're not going any more south, which we probably aren't at this point, let's start heading a little bit to the north here as well. We'll keep sending the bat out. Oh, no, 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 no. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. We don't want to... Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think there's a place here. Oh, no! Full speed ahead, please. Uh, full power to the engines, please. Don't explode, though. Turn the lights. Wait, are they on or off? I'm not sure. But wait, there's a place here. We'll go here. All clear. Dock. Utter Shrew. The queenly core of this spore haunted sea. Uh, the Utter Shrew. Climb the fungal fiber ladders to its summit. Shaggy, suspicious villagers scratch a living here amidst endless clouds of spores and scurrying mass of plant animal hybrids. None of them ever live. Monsters, one explains darkly. Z full of monsters. So we can search the shroom top. We can visit the village. We can trade honey. We can gather intelligence. We can encourage the blimmy and gallivants here to explore. Okay, let's start by gathering intelligence. What happens here on top of mushroom the size of Marlboro? A slow survey. The villagers live a shabby but sufficient life. The utter shroom provides. They are secretive, taxidermy, incurious. Ships rarely visit. Now let's look at this. Are there shops here? There are no shops here. So, let's search the shroom top. Fibrous huts, spore fogs, that endless damp purple smell. Is there anything else? Secret sweetness. There's something different about this patch of mushroom, right? It's crumbly, friable. You dig into it and a rich apple smell emerges from beneath. You find a pocket of different fungus stuff, pale green and delicious. Your crew scoops it into buckets. Embedded in it are fruit? Solace fruit. They grow in swamps far from here. That's peculiar. Time is now! You found something wrong. Vance per case, something pleasant will happen. Oh, okay. We have one extraordinary implication. We get five extra plus and we get three solace fruit. Wonder where we could sell the solace fruit for best money. Hmm. Well. Ooh. That's the thing. Should I start taking... Like, I should probably check all the shops. See the... Like, take the number... The amount of stuff they want to know. Or not the amount. The price of stuff they are buying and selling and see if we can make a profit with some sort of a trade here. Uh, we can visit the village, sure. Hospitable, not exactly, but they usually don't chase you off with sticks and they usually let you sit beside their mil mildew smelling fire. The central contradiction of rumor existence. They hate the utter shroom, but they do anything to avoid leaving. Monsters! Today they're telling the story of how they came here. It features a shipwreck, a rain of orange jewels, the mother's blessing. There's a great deal about adversity and survival, and wishful hints about their homeland somewhere to the west. So we get another memory of distant shore. Nice, and we can then encourage our Blamican Gallivans here to explore, so let's do that. It might feel a kinship with the place. It's certainly very mushrooming. Unaccustomed silence. Your ever-present Blamican is, for once, nowhere to be seen. The engine room is quiet. Your maps are exactly as you left them. Not one is defaced or crumpled into a ball. Finally, you spot the tip of a tendril poking out from under a pile of unwashed clothing. Your blemican indicates that under no circumstance whatsoever will be emerging. What big piece is about, about the utter shroom? Did the other mushrooms bully it? And that's all we can do here, so perhaps not. And off we go. So let's start heading north then. We'll probably find something here. Uh, I mean, we have 11... Ooh, all right, the other shroom. Well, we already fed the other shroom. Uh, so maybe we need to go a little bit further before setting up the bat again. Nice to have some light here, though. Uh, I wonder if we should be going a bit more... I can already press this to the east, though. Turn on the lights. Let's not get too much terror. Yeah, a little bit of an easterly... Come on, I know the utter shroom is there. Don't tell me about the utter shroom again, please. I'm hoping to find something else, something. Uh, Cause I, like I feel like the the mangrove college, which is one of the places we want to go, is usually like somewhere here-ish. So I don't know. We could maybe find it uh, from here. Ooh, Pigmoat Isle. That's a nice place. Where's Pigmoat Isle? Okay, it's right there. 
Well, let's head to Pig Mode Isle then. Turn off the lights and duck. Two houses, both alike in dignity. On a lonely desert beach, there is no habitation in sight, no market, only an old rotting dock. A stretch of sand thickens into damp black earth from which sprout stunted palms? Not quite. Tall fungal growths with frond like caps, as if someone had sculpted the idea of a tree from a mushroom. Listen, box, see what awaits you. Whoa! As you step on the queue, you hear clamor, shout, and shooting. You can see, off in the distance, smoke rising from beyond the hill and dots of fire flecking the horizon. Two tiny figures stand a little further down the quay, unmoving, as if awaiting your approach. The following is extract from the popular Diary of a Z Captain, from London to Irem and what we did there before we arrived, washed ashore on Mutton Island and subsequently sterilized in an unexpurgated gazette. The author's identity remains unknown. The Tale of Pigmont Isle, in which a delegation is made, a choice is presented, war is declared, a most singular treasure is sought by all, and a new empire is founded with tooth and claw. Chapter 1. The Delegation The figures were rodents. To my left was a Ratus Faber, wearing goggles, a blacksmith's apron, and an assortment of tools. To my right, an unusually large guinea pig, wearing a helmet and breastplate reminiscent of nothing so much as the High Middle Ages. The rat stepped forward first and bowed. Welcome, Captain, to Red Star Island! I am Edgar, second chief engineer of the 3rd Rat Brigade. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost is your choice. The rat stepped back at precisely the same moment with what appeared to be the ease of long habit. A gu the guinea pig scuttled forward and made a declaration to chip. Welcome, Captain, to the island of Cavia. I am Lady Augusta Deveres, Finch of the Blackwater Switches. Send a solo for King Krakaraju, first of his name. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost is your choice. The two stood attention, looking at me expectantly. So... Who do we spoke? Okay, we speak to both of them. <laughs> I spoke to the chief engineer. His eyes had wave cold to glint them, and he wore his scars like jewels. A rat in the making. I asked the chief engineer to elaborate. He looked at me for a long, measured moment before speaking gruffly. I think I, I, I'm not gonna do those rat, rat and guinea pig voices I just tried to do there because seriously, that <laughs> going that high it already kind of hurt my throat. So I'm just, I'm just gonna read this normally. We came to this island to make a home for ourselves away from London, its cats and snuffers, its ratskin suits. We came to live as citizens of our own republic. We came with our tools, our teeth, our clever hands, and we made a beautiful city by the light of the rat star that shone bright and blue on Mount Ararat. The chief engineer nodded towards the distant hill. One day we break the deaths of the chicken woods, and from the top of Mount Ararat we plucked the rat star to be our light, our beacon. But the pigs of Cavi saw the light, and they lusted for it. They sent armies to rule us and steal our star. We want permit to take what is ours. We will resist to our last breath. Will you join us in defeating them? And what's the Seneschal gonna say? How did an armored guinea pig manage to look regal? Seneschal cleared her throat with a delicacy to rival the Duchess's own before speaking. Grace Gnaw the King, our Lord and Sovereign, full seven months had sojourned on the sea, conquered this land and won the southern main. Now no fortress against him shall remain, no city walls be left for him to gain, save the rats that squeak behind mountain. Unlikely was the lamp of our deliverance, assured shall be our glorious and their fall, when our ladies are restored to our hall. The seneschal composed herself, then added, We saw truth and beauty by the light of our lady's eye on Mount Caveat, but the rats, with their guns and their chatter and their peasants' politics, stole from us. We will subjugate them and take it back. They are rabble, and we will rule them with a steel shot velvet on our paws. Will you join us? You know what? I'm not much for a monarchy, so I'm going to go with the chief engineer here. As you can well imagine, I face quite a dilemma. Their red eyes stare up at me, waiting for my choice. I sided with the chief engineer, sure. He seemed grumpy but honest. Also, I know all too well what rat-made weapons can do. Or we could try to broker a peace. I wonder if that would even... No, that... don't feel like that's the thing that's gonna happen. So let's side with the chief engineer. A friend to rats. I extended a finger to the chief engineer, who shook it grimly. The seneschal hissed and chattered her teeth in disgust, but kept her distance. You made the right choice, said the chief engineer. Let me show you around. So we gained one fuel and one supplies and an occurrence, our memoirs. A rat in the making, quality is now one. You chose to help the rats. The chief engineer led me to the northern side of the island, skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of what can only be termed checkpoints, as fierce-eyed rats shouldered the derringers and saluted the chief engineer. Soon we came upon a small colony, smaller than some of the infestations I had encountered in London flats. Perhaps only 50 rats' favor altogether, working diligently to fortify their side of the island. 
The first thing I noted was a brilliant light beaming out from a stump of chicken wood about six feet high. It bathed the whole settlement in a clean blue glow and was almost too bright to look at. By its light I could see several raised mounds of earth suggesting shallow tunnels. An efficient wish fishing operation was set up by the water, an albino rat mending nets while others stabbed sharpened sticks into the waves. Further inland was a barracks where a sergeant barked drills at a small squadron of fighters. My rival drew attention and several rats paused in their work to look at me curiously. Welcome to Marinia, said the chief engineer, voice warm with pride. It's much not to look at, but it will be once we routed the cavies. Take a stroll around while I summon the war council. With that he vanished in one of the mounds and left me to explore. So we can do a lot of things. Okay, let's visit the rats barracks. The drill sergeant appeared to be sizing me up. Were the few rats around here really all she had to launch an attack? We were fighting impressive odds. I approached the drill surgeon and went so far as to salute her, which earned me a grunt of satisfaction. The sergeant dismissed her troops and offered me a bit of chicken wood jerky to gnaw on. There's more of us below ground, she explained, but not enough. The cavies are bigger and there's more of them. We're better with weapons, but haven't got the stuff to make them with. Most of us came here as stowaways and brought nothing but food, tools and the fur on our backs. We can fish and we nibble the chicken woods, but we can't make guns out of trees. The cavies came with their own steamer and seem to have endless supplies. We raid them sometime, but there are so few of us and we can never hold out onto territory again for long. But that's of no consequence. All we want is left in peace to build our republic and the rat star. She added thoughtfully after a moment. Of course, we want that too. So let's take a closer look at the rat star. An excitable looking rat was peering as it threw smoky goggles, twitching her whiskers and making notes on what appeared to be a real paper. Blue as sapphire, endlessly more brilliant. It's not a star, of course. Not really. But try explaining that to the others. The chief engineers don't want me working too hard to convince them. Say this better for morale. Just look at it. Look! She offered me her goggles. I managed to work them over just enough of one of my eyes to see the truth of what she was studying. It was Scintillac, but unlike any I'd seen before. Blue as a sapphire, but more brilliant. Something about the clarity of this color was tremendously soothing. The chief science officer teetered with pleasure as I handed her goggles back. Those who have been to Cavey's side of the island and live to tell of it say that there's plenty of glow there, plenty of bright in the water all around, but nothing like this. We took this from the island's center, Mount Ararat. Only, it's not a mountain, of course, any more than this is a star. It's hollow, there's sweet water inside, and coral crawling all up the walls of it. But nothing that glows save this. It's ours now, and no one can take it from us. Let's head to the beach. Who ever heard of a rat mending a net? Where the green billows played. An albino rat smiled at me from his mending work, looking dainty and a little shy. Chicken wood floats, especially when it's dried out and sealed, so we're able to paddle out a bit and cast our nets. We came, come up with all sorts of things, blind fish, crabs, sometimes chunk of broken tentacle. But the fishing would never be so good without the rat stuff, he beamed. I think it only draws good fish and keeps the scary ones at bay. I know the chief science officer doesn't believe it, but I do. That light is our livelihood. But right, let's finish our exploration. The bells of the war council rang. I was summoned. The chief engineer emerged from underground with a motley assortment of other rats. He introduced them as weapon experts, strategists and field commanders. So you're going to help us beat the cavies, he said. Hard edge to his voice. But how exactly? 35% uh, challenge, 46% challenge... Mm -hmm. Shall we roll or shall we just give the advice? I mean, 46, that's almost 50. I like 50 50 rolls, I like to roll. So, I determined to take the lead. I had ship, I had cannons. We would steer her up to the southern side of the island and have at those uppity animals. Also, clattery air. Oh, we can't talk to you right now. Oh, let's roll! A palpable hit. Oh, we succeeded. Nice. The rats gave me what information they possessed about the cavies settlements, but I still had to improvise a great deal on the spot. A perfect storm of speed, stealth and strength in arms favored us. Our cannons letting fly a volley of shot onto the beach before the cavies could scramble in their grounded ship to man its guns. Screams and squeals filled the air. The enemy fled. A damp hash shuttled over my crew as the smoke cleared to reel the torn and bloodied bodies of guinea pigs littering the shore. A grim business, but I had honored my commitment to the rats and found a wealth of Sintlac ringing the beach to harvest as spoils. Hail Marinia, two house like in you. Not that this is saying much, man. An occurrence. Your Pigmon Island might quality is now five. Adequate. Your Pigmon Island civilization quality is now four. Troubled. Your Pigmon Island spirit quality now three. Conflicted. We have three that We have pale of parabola linen. Uh, the house of Cavi had fallen. Marinia was triumphant. All that remained were the celebrations and the continuation of our voyage. Oh, how we feasted long in the night. Then, uh, I invited one of the rats' favor to join us. 
Observe all water ships without a few rats. So that's sure. We have well a uh, sinker. Oh, you. Oh, we lost one of Pokemon civilization. That was probably not a good thing. The chief engineer couldn't leave his colony, but he read my request to his people. The albino rat I saw mending net shyly stepped forward. I'm good at fixing things, he said earnestly, and I'd like to see more of the world. I waited for him to gather up some effects and say goodbye to the family before accompanying him on board. Right. Uh, unlock the memories of rat making a, a rat and making a. I need to be healed of the cavies or the white dark sea beckoned. You know, let's just intercede on behalf of the cavies. Let's say that you know they they they, they we beat them. We don't need to like kill all of them or something like that. They were crushed, defeated, and I could see their spirits broken without the light of the rat star to guide them. They needed an advocate. A grudging concession. I appealed to the chief engineer's morale, fortitude, and sense of fair play. Perhaps the cavies suffered the loss of the light from the center of the island. Perhaps they were only trying to get it back, not steal it from the rats. The chief engineer looked troubled at the thought. We only want to be left alone, he said. He looked towards the seneschal, haphazardly bandaged among the rats' other prisoners. Perhaps for the negotiation is possible. As I left, I saw the albino rat timidly offering a young cavy prisoner a piece of fresh fish. Uh, forge between the rats and cavies. Your pigma on spirit is now six. Ooh, that's good. And the white dark Z beckoned. We had eaten our fill and our business was concluded. It was time to continue our voyage and see what other wonders and terrors still awaited us. The end. There, you finish your diary entry. The final dregs of the rats a surprisingly good wine. They line up to salute you as you leave the victory banquet, escorting your ship through the foundation of their new republic. You now have one of these. Port of our Pigmont Island. Your hunger call is gone. A new nation has been founded. The time passed underneath the most adorable empire. Right. Got any shops here? Uh, anything else we can do? Uh, steal the rat star. Okay, let's not steal the rat star. We could help Marinia solve a dilemma if we had something awaiting them, but something is not awaiting us. So next time we come here, we get that waiting for us. Uh, let's see, what is the Albano Tinkra? Oh, it's a mascot as well. I was hoping it to be a chief engineer, actually. No, we'll keep the Blemigan as our mascot. But then I also think we're going to end this episode here and continue from this point in the next one. I'm a cop. This has been Sun. Let's see. Goodbye, world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.